Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today I'll be continuing with Episode 9 in the C++ tutorial for beginners. In this episode, we'll be covering the switch case statement. So the switch case goes something like this. If you type switch, followed by open and close parentheses, inside of here, there's going to be something called an expression. And based off of this expression, the switch case statement will make some sort of a decision. We'll be filling this in in a moment, but let's go ahead and continue building our switch case. We'll need open and closed curly braces as well. And our cases are going to exist between these curly braces. Our first case can be written by typing in case and then some value here followed by a colon. Then we'll press enter. I'll go ahead and indent my code in a little bit. And then inside of here is where we can put some statement to execute. And this up here is actually called a constant expression. Finally, one other thing that I'll like to add in here is a break. All a break does is it stops checking the next set of cases. That way you're not executing multiple lines of code because you didn't break out of the switch case. So just know break is a key word that allows you to break out of this switch case statement. So we can have multiple cases. So let's say value two. And then again, this is a constant expression. And with this, we can have another statement different from the one above. We'll use our break one more time. And here I'm introducing one more case called default. This one is a special case because if none of the other values meet the expression here, then we fall into this special case called default. And we can have again, another statement. Well, this is the general outline of a switch case. We'll go ahead and fill this in in a moment. Make sure to support the channel by subscribing below and hitting the notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Switch cases are great when you have a bunch of conditions to check with already known values, also known as constants, as we've learned before. One example is that you might process a user's input in order to decide what a program should do next. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm actually gonna get some user input using sin, and I'm gonna throw the user input into something called calc, and let's go ahead and define calc above. I'm actually gonna use a char or character to define calc, and I'm not gonna initialize it as anything quite yet. I want the user to go ahead and put something in for that. Let me go ahead and save this. And then what I wanna do is make a very simple calculator here. So our expression here can simply be calc. So what this means is whenever we go through this switch case, we're going to be checking what's in calc in order to define whether or not we jump into one of these cases. So as far as the value goes, I'm going to be checking for a multiplication symbol or I'm going to be checking for, let's say, a division symbol. And if I copy these a couple more times down here, we can add a few more cases. So let's just do plus and minus in order to complete our, our basic calculator here. And now we'll fill in the statements. If you went ahead and made it this far, please hit that like button for me. It really does help me out. So in my first case, I'm going to multiply something. So I can actually spit something out at the user using C out. And I'll just say value one times value two and then I'll do an end line here. I'm gonna reuse this a few times in my other statements. So I'll copy and paste this down the line here. And then all we have to do is change the various operators. So I'm gonna make that plus here and minus in this last one. Let's also ask the user for these two numbers. So I'll do int value one, value two, and then sin value one and sin value two. Don't forget the semicolons. And then one last thing I'll fill in is this statement down here. Let's say the user gives us a character that we don't understand. So we don't know if it's a multiplication symbol, division symbol, an addition or subtraction symbol. We can say unknown operator, just so the user knows. And I'll put an end line here and save this. Let's see if this will compile real quick. First I'll compile and then I'll run the program. So the first thing we're expecting to put in here is an operator. I'll do a multiplication symbol followed by a number for value one, I'll put two, and then for value two, I'll put three. We got a six out. So what does that mean? Let's make sure we check it out here in our program. We'll go through the steps here. First, we ask the user to go ahead and specify calc, and that's either the multiplication symbol, division symbol, plus or minus symbol. I went ahead and did multiplication, and then value one was two, value two was three, so what happened was, so we took calc and then the value of calc was the multiplication symbol or the asterisk. And we went through each individual case here and checked whether or not the case constant expression was equal to what was in calc. 
So the very first case would have executed since it was a multiplication symbol. And then we just said value one times value two and we printed that out to the user. That's it. Then we broke out of this switch case statement and the program ended. We could have just as well supplied a division symbol and it would have divided the two values or added them or subtracted them as well. So let's see what happens if we don't actually give a proper symbol that can be processed by our switch case here. So we'll rerun. This time I'll just put in open parenthesis and then put my two values in and we get the unknown operator. Going back to the code, what happened here? Well, we supplied calc with an open parenthesis. We switched on that open parenthesis and we went through, checked, is it this case, which is the multiplication symbol? No. Is it a division symbol? No. Is it the addition symbol? Nope. Is it the subtraction symbol? Nope. So by default, if it doesn't meet any of these constant expressions, then it moves on to the default, which is printing out unknown operator. Switch cases can only be used on integer values, so don't try any floating point numbers. And you might be asking, how did we get away with using characters? Well, characters can be represented as integers, so you can still get away with using characters in a switch case. One last thing that I'll mention is if you wanted to, you could use the same statement for more than one case. And you can do this by saying case and then specifying our constant expression again. Let's say maybe you wanted to use the pound sign in order to do a subtraction as well. We can do that by doing this and not typing anything as our statement here. Instead, what this switch case will do is if we type in a minus sign or a pound sign, then the statement that gets executed is actually this statement. So it just decides, hey, I don't have anything available here. I have my next case. These cases are two together because we didn't supply a break. So it will run through things, check the first constant expression, the second one, the third one, come down here to the fourth one. And since there's no break in between, it means, hey, go ahead and still execute the next case. So let's give this a try real quick. We'll compile things and then run. So this time I'll type in a pound, type in my first number, type in my second number, and we can see that we got two. So 10 minus eight was two. Even though I used the pound sign, it still went ahead and executed this line of code and then broke out of the switch case statement. These very well could have been just numbers as well. We could have done case one, case two, three, four, five, and this would have worked as well too. But instead of expecting a character, we're now expecting some sort of an integer. Make sure to mess around with this a little so you get a handle on switch case statements. They're fairly easy to use and you can get away with condensing down your if, else, if, else statements by using a switch case where the conditions you're checking are already known. And that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.